What's up guys, today I get to show you a brand new blaster, which also happens to be the most powerful blaster that I currently own. This here is called the Sabre M20S, or sniper version of the original M20. The M20S will be available in a limited run for 980 Singapore dollars, which is about 700 in US dollars or 1000 Australian dollars. And the Delrin exterior will come in a black base colour. If you're worried though about not being able to use this in public because it's black, every single one of these will come with a vinyl decal of the buyer's choosing, such as this Digiflora pattern that I chose here. But there's everything from Marvel superheroes to bright colourful patterns that you can choose from. It's the same mag-fed pump-action nerf springer that you're familiar with, built like a tank in the shape of a brick, with an upper and lower linear guide rail inside to make the prime far smoother than most other blasters. It has a full length metal top Picatinny rail that has absolutely no movement to it at all. And of course side M-lock attachment points where you can add smaller rail segments or accessories. The main difference though with the Sabre M20S is that the plunger tube or cylinder has an extra 20mm of length to it. So this has quite a bit more air volume than the original M20. It also comes with Sabre's stainless steel pusher already installed, which has increased airflow compared to the aluminium or Delrin pushers of the original and M20C respectively. It's basically Sabre's flagship version of their product with all of the possible upgrades out of the box except for the auto kit, and it should get higher muzzle velocities from that extra plunger tube volume. It still doesn't come with a grip or a foregrip. I chose a black airsoft grip to match the black base colour of the M20S, and I think it's a great match. Sabre sent me two different aluminium barrel options to try out with the blaster. Both are 650mm long with a 13mm internal diameter, but one has internal string rifling and the other has their new bearing rifling attached to the end of it. It's easy to swap between barrels with the M20 due to the threaded nuts on the barrel which screws into the front of the blaster. Something to note with the M20S is because of the extra length of the plunger tube, You'll also want to use longer springs to get full compression out of the blaster. I'm currently using their strongest spring, the 26kg, but I've added a 15mm spring spacer behind it. Sabre are planning to release longer springs designed specifically for the M20S, so you shouldn't have to use a spring spacer yourself. The 650mm barrel with the bearing rifling attached got an average velocity of 386 feet per second, and a high of 390 and a low of 382. So a variation of only 8 feet per second. The 650mm barrel with internal rifling got an average velocity of 391, with a high of 403 and a low of 378. While the string rifling did have a higher velocity, it wasn't as consistent as the bearing rifling, which may hurt its accuracy. At a distance of 30 meters, here's how the bearing rifling shot. The bearing rifling at 30 meters had a grouping of 25 centimeters wide and 45 centimeters tall. Plenty enough to hit a human torso every single shot. Now let's take a look at the string rifling at 30 meters. At 30 meters, the string rifling had a grouping 60 centimeters wide and 50 centimeters high. Up close, it seems the string rifling is a little worse than the bearing rifling, particularly in width. So now let's step back 40 meters with the bearing rifling.
At 40 meters, the bearing rifling shot a grouping 45 centimeters wide and 50 centimeters high, which is better than the string rifling did 10 meters closer, and definitely enough to hit a human torso with every single shot. Let's see how the string rifling does at 40 meters as well. What if we aim at the dead center now at 40 meters? <laughs> That's still too high. At 40 meters, the string rifling shot a grouping 25 centimeters wide and one meter high. Definitely enough to hit an enemy player with every shot. Interestingly, the width of the grouping improved at 40 meters compared to 30 meters. My best guess is the darts needed a little further to stabilize with the string. Compared to the bearing rifling though, I think it's pretty close between the two. One was wider and one was taller. Now let's head back to 50 meters with the bearing rifling. That sounded like a hit. I think they hit the brick below it, but I, I can't be sure at this range. That was a hit, definitely. I think we hit the brick below it. And that's definitely a hit. At 50 meters, the bearing rifling shot a grouping 30 centimeters wide and 95 centimeters high. Still enough to hit an enemy player every shot. Let's see how the string rifling compares. I think we just clipped the white on top of the target. Hit. Short. Hit. At 50 meters, the string rifling shot a grouping one meter wide and 1.4 meters high. Significantly worse than the bearing rifling in comparison. Finally though, let's step it back even further to 60 meters with the bearing rifling. That sounded like a hit. That sounded like a hit. Let's drop my mag out. That was definitely a hit. Hit. At 60 meters, the bearing rifling shot a grouping 50 centimeters wide and 1.5 meters high. The shot that dropped short landed around where a player's foot would be, while the other shots hit him in the chest or head. And now finally, let's see the string rifling at 60 meters. 
Yeah, figuring out what we have to aim is going to be the hard part. Hit. Hit. Damn it, we hit the tree above it. Hit. I think that was a hit. It could have dropped short and bounced to the right there. And I think that dropped short to the left. The string rifling at 60 metres had a grouping 50 centimetres wide and 3 metres high. And that's excluding the shot that hit the tree above where I was shooting from. You can't see it here, but one shot fell short by about 2 metres. And that's further back than the bearing rifling was falling short by. The two had the same width on target though. Looking at all the distances that I fired at though, I'd have to say the bearing rifling does win the accuracy test. I then went somewhere with no trees above me to test the absolute maximum range of the blaster. Aiming my laser rangefinder back to where I fired from, it read 72 meters. To summarize the M20S, it's definitely an upgrade over the original M20 and it's able to hit a person reliably out to 60 meters with a maximum total range of 72 meters. So if you want a blaster that's built like an absolute tank and can shoot 400 feet per second straight out of the box and you don't mind that it looks a bit like a brick, this is a solid option and it's the most accurate and long range blaster I currently have. To end off the video, here's some gameplay footage where I dropped the spring down to 14 kilograms to get 300 feet per second. Unfortunately, the run cam scope cam didn't work in the first round, but I fixed it by the second round. Enjoy. You see that? Headshot. Whose was this?
Got me too. That's it for this one guys. If you've enjoyed this video, go ahead and click on my profile icon to subscribe. Otherwise, here's two other videos you might enjoy. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.